Okay, our next presenter is, is David, um, sorry, Davy uh, Monticelli. He will be talking about the odorous compounds emissions in the urban and industrial area. Uh, Davy uh, is environmental engineer at the Federal University of Espirito Santo with partial graduation at the University of Auckland, New Zealand. Master's students in environmental engineering developing a thesis on the dispersion modeling of asthma precursors in urban industrial environment. Interested in air quality and health dispersion modeling, uh, receptor modeling, low cost sensors and data fusion techniques with three years of experience in the field. Please welcome Davy. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of my team. We are going to talk about a little of other compounds emission in an urban and industrialized area. Uh, I'm going to present the first part of a bigger project that is integrated in four parts. The first one is the emission inventory, where we estimate the sources uh, the emission rate of other compounds in many sources, and the sources in the identification as well. After that, we have the atmospheric modeling, where we uh, estimate the concentration and the distribution of the pollutants. We also uh, evaluate this in contrast with the threshold limits of perception. After that, we have the monitoring stage, where you specify the measurement equipments based on the previous results and you have to identify the ideal location to measure these uh, compounds, these other compounds. And of course, you have the fourth, the fourth and last stage, which is the other perception network, where, where you select uh, and train the panelists that will integrate the, the other perception network, and they will be this engagement with the community. What do we know so far? Um, we know that uh, TRS and ammonia compounds uh, are clearly odorant, but there is also a different group called VOC, volatile organic compounds, that they uh, present a variety of compounds, and some of them are odorant, others are not, and they are emitted by several different industries, especially in an urban industrialized area. So this is the methodology we you, we use it to construct the emission inventory. First, we have to list the VOC and TRS compounds, many of them. After that, we have to list the sources of, pardon, is VOC there, not COV, but we have to list the sources of VOC and TRS in the study region. After that, we have to chemically specify the emissions of COV and TRS by source. Then we quantify the emission of other compounds by source, and we summarize the data by the type of order and perception threshold. We, I, we choose to put a, a difficult scale in this methodology, as you can see there, and this, diff uh, this uh, difficult scale range in level of complexity and available literature. So let's begin with the first stage. Here are some um, references we use it to construct this list of odorant compounds. Of course, we have Andrew Drovlex, uh Atlas of Odor Character Profiles. We also have many studies about uh, wastewater treatments, and they list several, several odorant compounds. We have also agricultural operations and food industry industries. They provide with us a lot of chemicals, and we can gather from this data uh, those that are odorant and those that are not. So j this is just a, an example of the list of compounds that we can gather from these documents. We have the name uh, in the UPAC name and the chemical formula. Next, we have to list the odorant, uh, pardon me, the sources of COV and the sources of TRS in our study region. So 
this is a map just to show the location of our study region. We have here in the green triangles the um, sources of VOC. We have also the location of the wastewater treatment plants, which are in pink. And in highlighted there, there is the community that is constantly uh, complaining about other, other uh, emissions in their neighborhoods. So we, d we made this study for them. This is just to show the emission of uh, hydrogen sulfide and other compounds from the TRS family and the amount that is being emitted every hour from these sources right here. We also investigated the wastewater treatment plants that were closest to the communities. So we have three of them. All of them are um, maturation pounds. They use the maturation pounds. And we also have the gas stations uh, that are inside the communities that can be causing uh, other nuisance as well. And they emit several different uh, other compounds. Okay, so we have a list of common VUC and TRS compounds that are odorant, and we have a list of the sources that can be emitting these compounds in the our study region. Now is the next stage, which is uh, chemically specified the emissions of these sources. How we do this? Uh, j here, just an example as well. You have the industry and non-industrial uh, sources. What we need to know is the chemical profile of the emission. So we have here the name of the compounds that are being emitted by such a source. We have the weight, how much is being emitted of that particular compound. And we ask ourselves the question, is that compound uh, a possible order by its formula and by its name? And we cross, uh, we cross that with the list that we made before. We used uh, US EPA documents to create this uh, chemical profile and also literature. So many, many uh, papers. Here's just a, a sample of some industries and activities that we actually got the chemical profile. We have the steel industry, a lot of, a lot of profile for them. Landfill, airport, wastewater treatment, of course, vessels and harbors. Again, a lot of industries, this is a kind of a literature review work to get all these profiles to build the emission inventory of other compounds in the study region. Then we need to quantify the emission of odorous compounds by source. So what you have here in this next table, it's all the compounds that are being emitted, their total emission by, uh, in kilograms per hour, their odor threshold, uh, the smell, and the reference, of course, where we get this data. And here we have, uh, when I say total emission, it's all the sources in the region that emit benzene, that emit toluene, dodecan, all these compounds. They are all sum up. Just to get, to get an idea of how much is being emitted, emitted of each compound. Finally, we have to summarize the data by the type of order and perception threshold. To do that, we, ranking, we, we establish a rank for the compounds using a simple Gaussian formula. I'm not going to explain all the mathematics here. I know some of of you know, some of them, some of, of you may be not so familiar, but basically we simulated, uh, if, if we can say that, uh, the emission in a specific scenario that will cause uh, higher concentrations in the, in the communities, which is uh, low wind conditions, um, the release is not that high, very, uh, not that distant from the communities. And from that, we got that those five compounds right here or what were the most important ones for our study. So we had ammonia, benzene, ethyl benzene, hydrogen sulfide, of course, and toluene. And they are listed as important, not just because of their other perception threshold, but also because the amount they are being emitted. So uh, we estimated their concentration. We also used the peak to mean value uh, to correct the the estimation from one hour uh, modeling to five minutes. And here are some questions for future research. 
First, uh, what other sources are left in for a VOC or TRS profile for a complete inventory? This was the main difficulty in our study. We need to get more data about the chemical profile, the chemical emissions from every kind of industry out there to establish a good standard. There is also uh, the question of what operational parameters are relevant to the emission of odorous compounds. So take hydrogen sulfide for an example. You have the coke plant, uh, the coal loading. Uh, how to lower the, the emissions during such operation? And is it possible to use a different process that can lower the emissions? Pardon me. And finally, we are going to uh, advance to the next stage, which is study the worst case scenarios of emission and of course dispersion using the Kalpuf dispersion model and correlate this data with the other perception network that we established in the communities. Those are the references and thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, no questions? Thank you very much.